InDesign has a single vertical row toolbar, and if you mouse over any tool and pause, it tells you its name, and in parentheses you'll notice that it says the letter that you would hit to jump to that tool. In fact, the selection tool has two ways to get there. The letter V, and in my head I always say move, or the escape key. If I pause over the direct selection tool, you can remember A for arrow. This is one very different thing when it comes to Microsoft applications versus Adobe applications. Single letters will change tools. For example, if I hit the letter T, I jump to the Type tool. If I hit the letter V for Move, I go to the Selection tool. And that's what the Selection tool is used for. If I click an object or a group, in this case the white box behind it is grouped with the text box. When I click and drag, that's what the Move tool will do. And if I grab the corner, I can stretch an object. Being a hair outside the corner will let me rotate an object. You'll see the icon changes from a stretch icon here, moving to the edge, just a hair outside, I get a rotate icon. And I can see that I'm rotating minus two and a half degrees. These are smart guides that show up whenever you move objects or rotate objects. I don't want to harm this, so I'm going to choose File, Revert. Revert will go back to the last saved version. And yes, I'll hit Revert. You may also notice as you navigate around a few other icons. I've got a little chain here indicating that this image is a link. And it's telling me that it's a placed file called sfcityline.ai. I love that it shows me the exact link. If I were missing a link, this would be a red stop sign with a question mark. This circle is called the Content Grabber. And this makes it easier for people who are newer to Adobe InDesign to move a picture inside the box. If I click anywhere except here, I've selected this San Francisco city line. And I could move the entire frame, or what I've been calling box. That frame moved the picture and its container together. If I look for the circle, the target, I can click once, and now I've got the original AI file. You could see the dimensions actually extend outside of the frame. That's because some cropping has been done. If I drag now, I can crop off more of the right side, or crop off more of the left side. So technically this is getting to the picture inside the frame. That's what that circle or target does, the content grabber. I'll choose File Revert again, and you could feel free to play for a little while before you actually revert back to the last saved version. Now there are several primary tools that you will use. The Selection tool to move objects or crop photos or rotate, or resize the container of a picture or a placed graphic. The Direct Selection tool used to be used before the Content Grabber to click and move a picture inside a box. So we have two ways to do that now. I'll just undo this. The third primary tool is the Type tool. But I don't like to show people going to the Type tool to edit text, because in my opinion there's a faster way. Whether you're on the Selection tool or the Direct Selection tool, I can double click and that gets me inside a text box so I could edit the text. So if I double click the word Guide, I could change this to Tour. That is editing. And remember the Selection tool had two ways to get to it? The letter V will not work right now because V would type the letter V in the box. So that's why Adobe added the Escape key. Escape takes you out of text edit mode and back to the selection tool. But to edit type, you can do it the long way. Click the T tool. Click inside the box. Now, other primary tools that you may use include the Rectangle Frame tool. 
This will make a container to hold an image or a drawing. The rectangle tool will actually give you a one-point border. And actually, both of these can hold text, images, or placed objects. Finally, you've got your hand tool, which lets you move your screen around, and your zoom tool, which will let you click to zoom in, or do what's called a marquee zoom, click and drag to see this graphic closer. Those are your fundamental tools. I'm going to go to my View menu and choose Fit Page in Window, or, since this is a facing page document, View Fit Spread in Window. A spread is facing pages, those two pages together. Finally, I'll go back to my Selection tool. And if you notice, the first five tools on the toolbar have no nested tools. A nested tool would be a tool that exists underneath another one. For example, with the Type tool, I can click and hold. And underneath the Type tool is the Type on a Path tool to put type on a circle, for example, or a curvy shape. Or you could even have characters run around the city line if it was drawn in InDesign. So we've got a pen tool. And if I click and hold for two seconds, or if you right click, you could see there are three other nested tools underneath the pen tool. If I right click on the eyedropper tool, you'll see there's a measure tool underneath. If I right click or click and hold for two seconds on the rectangle tool, there's an ellipse and polygon. And the same with the rectangle frame tool, ellipse frame tool or polygon frame tool. So just one click on a tool makes it active. I'm going to go back to the selection tool to finish this off. And I often recommend that you click away from everything outside the page. This area outside the page is known as the pasteboard. And that's a safe way to deselect without accidentally drawing a new object if you are on the Rectangle Frame tool, or Rectangle tool, or even the Pen tool. Finally, your toolbar has two viewing modes, a double column or a single vertical row. These double-sided arrows will switch your view between those two modes. So this has been your tour of Adobe InDesign CS6's tools. Remember that single letters will change, so if you do not create a text box or get inside a text box and start typing letters like hello, <laughs> what it went to was H for hand first. Then when I hit E, it went to the free transform. Then when I hit L twice, it went to ellipse twice. And when I hit O, it went to the shear tool. So you must be inside a text box Otherwise, single letters will be changing tools on you. I'll go back to the Move tool, and I'd like you to take some time to surf through your toolbar and see the nested tools or buried tools hidden underneath the tools with a tiny little triangle in the lower right corner.